Hello everyone. Welcome to our business writing webinar today. My name is Faith Watson and I am your host for today's top 10 business writing tips. Before I get started, I want to share just a little bit about me and my background. Um, I have a very long history actually as a writer in business. Beginning, I dare say, 30 years ago when I got my start as a receptionist in a communications agency. And since then, I've simply worked my way up over the years to becoming a business marketing writer for some very large global corporations. And I also run my own business, coaching people on how to write, including my course on effective business writing skills for Go Skills. I'm going to jump right in with a brief overview of what we'll be covering today. And oh, by the way, uh, we also have Cecilia from Go Skills joined on the webinar with us today, and she will help us gather any questions you might have as we go along. You can simply type your questions in the chat area, and we will be circling back to answer any and all of them at the end of the presentation. So let's move on to the tips that I have to share with you today. They come from a full range of business writing applications. I'm going to cover pretty broad ground here. Um, there are lots of needs for proper and effective written communications, as I'm sure you know, in the professional environment. But um, we have some tried and true advice that we want to touch on today. And that includes personal business writing, things like your resume. Um, and our tip there uh, is that best resumes are not one size fits all. So we'll discuss that. We're going to also cover, cover the cover letter <laughs> on how to differentiate yourself. Uh, business letter writing and sales letter writing, two different um, nuances there. Um, knowing the reason for writing those and how to best use a PS is what we'll cover for your tips on those two. Uh, writing an apology or a bad newsletter, getting that tone right. Interoffice memos, another use for business writing. We want to avoid long memos, so we'll touch on some ways to do that. Internal report writing and following standardized forms. We have a tip for you on uh, writing a tagline, actually, which is a little bit of marketing business writing. Uh, social media, there's a lot to cover there. We're just going to talk about establishing the voice of the business in social media. And a website, writing for your websites, a specialty art, but we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, welcoming people onto your home page. So on we go to tip number one. Oh, not yet, sorry, let me back up. I wanted to just talk a little bit about um, how your business writing skills apply. So as we're touching on all of these tips, we have um, an idea about how important some of these small or seeming things can be. And this diagram that I have on this slide kind of is an overview or describes the audiences of the written communications that we tend to use in business. And it's why um, your skills matter so much is really who is going to read the writing that you produce. So it connects you, as you can see here on our little diagram, um, at the center with your team in business, and that could extend out to the company at large. Your business writing um, can move all the way up to the executive level. You might be writing for the executive level or just have them as your audience. Um, people you need to work with could be stakeholders in the company. That might be someone like a uh, partner, a landlord, a vendor, and um, the company at large, as we talked about, will also have an impact and receive many written communications in business. Some of the reasons business writing is so important, I'm going to cover quickly. You'll use it to make an impression or an introduction. So obviously first impressions count. We're gonna talk about the resume next. There's basic correspondence. It happens every day in the form of letters, thank yous, emails. Inner office correspondence also might take the form of emails. Uh, timely memo we're going to touch on today. Company communications at large, say project reports, another internal reporting tip we have for you. And uh, customer communications is another uh, way to 
implement business writing for some very important reasons like social media contacts. And finally, website communications, which takes uh, the marketing end of business communications one step further. And we're going to talk about your homepage copy a little later. So now we're going to move on to the first tip. And um, it's going to involve resume. This slide has a lot of information on it. You can kind of skim it over a little bit while I'm talking, but I'm going to zero in on one real important overview kind of tip. And the reason we're starting business writing webinar with news about resumes is because this begins kind of the business of personal business writing. Um, it's simply, it is a business document, right? And simply one that applies to you personally or will be presented um, about you on behalf of you for business reasons. So resume uses might be, of course, to get a job at the start of your career, be promoted, uh, move to a new position in your company, or even make a complete career change. That's when your resume is going to come into play. And it certainly is key into getting in, into a business position, period. And that's why we're beginning with this top tip. Best, the best resumes are not one size fits all. Uh, many people make the mistake of preparing one resume, their resume. And of course, it makes sense to have your basic version of your resume, but tweaking it to address the specific audience who will be reading it is where our tip comes into play. Um, and it's really a top tip because preparing versions of your resume for different roles in your field or perhaps for a different industry um, or a, a different supervisor to read, um, super important. So presenting yourself as the perfect match for your role in business um, is essential. And to do that, you'll need to customize your, res customize your resume to fit the job duties and qualifications that are desired by the employer. So we're going to start uh, that when we talk about resume writing with your objective at the top of your resume, what you're hoping to do. Um, and it should fit the position and the company ideally. So this example I have on this slide right here is a templated resume and it's simply for an entry level marketing or management position in a medium sized business. So this might be a recent college grad or someone who's making a career change. Oops, sorry about that. Went a little uh, quick. Let me just head backwards if we can. Okay. Um, we're looking at this objective um, and talking about how to customize it so your resume is not one size fits all. My advice for that is simply to take a peek at the um, position or role description that you're um, sending your resume to apply for and to polish that objective to customize your um, desires. So if you're looking for a senior level marketing role, that would change your objective. If you're looking to work in an entrepreneurial environment instead of a medium sized business, that would change your objective. You can skim through your resume, even when this webinar is over and look for ways to create alternate versions um, so it stands out and so it doesn't look like a generic version um, for all the positions or roles you might apply for. Now moving on to an accompanying document in business, a cover letter for your resume. It's your opportunity to stand out as we see here. Um, differentiating, differentiating yourself in your cover letter is just as important, if not more so, uh, to create interest in someone reading your resume. So we're going to uh, look at the cover letter as kind of a billboard, as we see here. Um, recognize that people are going to see it first. It's the power of attraction to pull them into your resume. And it is uh, a chance for you to highlight my goodness, we did it again. Excuse me. Um, highlight uh, some of the most important aspects of your resume so they can look for it when they open it. Of course, writing on a cover letter is more interesting. It's a more interesting read, and you can truly individualize 
um, some points that you can't really do within the space of your resume. Um, giving yourself a voice and connecting with your reader is important in business writing and important in something as simple as a cover letter. Yes, you're going to want to keep it brief, but a couple of powerful sentences to highlight what's most compelling about you and what's most compelling about the resume you want your audience to read. We're going to move on to something that's a bit more traditional uh, definition of business writing, and that is a business email. Um, emails are everywhere. We've been using them for a couple of decades now. And when it comes to business correspondence, I think we've gotten so used to email as a way to communicate. Crafting a proper business email really can be both overlooked <laughs> and undervalued. Again, a lot of information for you to kind of peruse on this slide, but I'm going to focus on um, just a couple parts of it. It's not super complex to create an email, um, but there is a preferred structure in business and the format for business email, just like there is for a business letter or a business report. It's something that is covered in more detail on how these email formatting plays out in the course, but one aspect certainly deserves a top tip here, and that is the subject line. I want to talk about subject line crafting for business writing in emails. We're going to look at a few reasons that the recipient of an email might want to open it right away, because the tip is to use your subject line to make people want to read the email now. You want to avoid getting buried in the dreaded list of 1,000 unopened emails in their inbox. Here's a few reasons, as we see on the slide. You're working on something together and have some information to share. Uh, you might have a subject line that refers to time-sensitive request or a change that needs to be addressed. You might have a time-sensitive offer if your email is um, sales-related business email, special news to share that's timely. There could be a mutual benefit or an important contact that is connecting you with the recipient of the email. So some examples of why someone might want to open your email right away via the subject line is they know who you are about our meeting today. We just met. There's something else I need to say to you. $1 shipping ends at midnight. There's the timely uh, bit of information that's helpful to your audience. It would make somebody quick open the email and find out what's going on in case they wanted to order. And Mr. So-and-so referred me to you. There's an important contact. A lot of times in the subject line, when they don't know who you are, the name of someone that they do know can make a big difference. So we're going to talk about business letters, and we have a few different business letter tips to cover with you today. This first one here is about a sales or prospecting letter. Um, I just want to describe business correspondence in the form of a sales letter, if you will, which could be a follow-up, you know, not necessarily an anonymous sales letter. You might have already had a phone conversation with someone. Um, a response to a request, for example, um, someone contacted you through your website and asked for something. So there's another sales letter. Uh, you might be doing business in the area and have close uh, contact that you can be reaching out to um, a new customer from. So anyway, um, many of you, if you're writing in business or even if you're an entrepreneur writing your own business um, communications, have a list of subscribers to your email list, your blog, um, your business list at large. Perhaps they're prospects that have hit an inquiry button on your website um, or they've bought something from you before. These are all the audience members um, that might possibly receive a sales or prospecting letter. And all these potential customers or people that you hope to do business with or do business with again um, kind of are the basis for our next tip, which is to include a purpose up front in your letter and personalize it when possible. Um, 
here's why. Got a example for a letter structure here, and this one um, is going to take us into our apology letter slide. But I want you to kind of see the structure for content and um, realize that the purpose of your letter right up front, even if it's a letter via email, and the personalization to who it's for um, are the reasons that someone appreciates receiving it and reads on and understands the purpose of the letter. No one appreciates a random sales letter. Um, everyone appreciates transparency in communications. So this is actually one of my favorite tips. Saying why you're writing up front in your business communications, especially in letters that might be a little lengthy, and addressing the person to who you're speaking to whenever possible is super important. I want to talk next about another kind of letter or email, which is an apology or bad news, if you will. We're talking about business letters in general, and the second type communicate something negative or undesirable. And I'll be honest with you, it's probably one of the most difficult types of business communications to write, but it probably needs to happen more often, maybe for that very reason. Uh, bad news correspondence can be tough. And sometimes for one recipient or a lower number of people receiving something, say, again, a certain order that has been delayed. Um, maybe a call can be made and, again, should be made if that is um, possible. But email, in the, in the um, case of bad news, can, can run into a little bit of a tricky area. We want to make sure that mass emails announcing um, general bad news are they're super carefully worded. You're going to probably pass on information that you don't want an influx of people running away from your business before um, you have a chance to apologize and possibly make amends. So let's talk about this tip for just a few seconds here in an apology letter. Um, not only do we want to write right away and, and relate that reason, there's that purpose up front and talk about, you know, what has happened, you know, what, what's gone wrong, um, offer facts. We want to watch our tone. Being sincere and clear is the most important part of um, apologizing. And in this letter, we see we're writing to Mr. Jones, apologizing for the difficulties that uh, the staff had in getting him set up for his closing address. At, at a presentation he made Sunday, um, but we are thanking him right away and appreciating his help and something positive, ending on a high note. But being honest that there were delays and being honest about offering a little bit of defense <laughs> um, sincerely, not glossing it over, is the crux of this tip here. Um, when you use this sort of an approach, you don't have to be so worried about the outcomes from your apology or bad news letters. Um, hopefully you'll always end it with uh, a way to move forward and um, mention the future and how it will go better next time. Okay, the use of memos in business writing, super common. An inter-office memo is something that uh, is going to happen within a company. And again, it's so common, it might be a little bit overlooked. A lot of memos are sent, again, electronically, but um, often memos are the things that are posted, you know, in the break room. There might be a brief notice, which would take not memo form, but message form. Um, a personal message to an individual individual is not a memo. An inter-office memorandum is something that we're talking about here. I mean, talking about perhaps a company policy or a team communications. Um, public posting of an announcement is another uh, common use for a memo. And our tip here is to avoid 
the long ones when possible. So it's not always possible. If, you're, if you've got a new company policy and, it, and it's quite lengthy, um, you probably have some explaining to do. However, choosing a memo to say, here's where you get that information or here's where you find that attachment um, is really a better choice. This is a simple way to guide you to get people to read and absorb um, your written communications. And memos are made for brief communications, but usually important communications. So a memorandum to the team saying, um, here are the 47 points we covered in our last meeting is really not the right use for a memo. That turns into an internal or a team report. It's a, a download overview that comes later. When you're asked to construct a memo uh, at work or you find that you need one, think of brevity and think of, once again, you're noticing a reoccurring theme, the audience who will be reading it and what they need to know and what the directions are for the next steps that they need to take, if any. And that can be the end of your memo. want to talk about more internal business writing, internal communications, if you will, in the form of a report. Reports are on the edge of general business writing and um, true, simple administrative work. But a lot of us in our roles in business find that we're reporting out, as we saw in that original diagram, to perhaps executives, to perhaps um, business partners, other stakeholders, um, team members. So inter-office reporting has usually a couple of layers. Project outlines usually follow a template. Sometimes you can create your own template if one doesn't exist. Often, if you're writing in business, preferred templates already do exist. So depending on the level uh, you're at of your business communications, whether, you know, if you're a subordinate preparing reports um, for your supervisors, that's a little bit different than if you're leading the team and creating your own, say, project initiation kickoff report as we're showing here. So this tip it recognizes the very real fact that there could be a huge volume of written reports and documents that could be central in a lot of different businesses. So using or creating standardized templates for departmental or team documents is a real valid and valued tip. There are plenty of places that you can find these templates. When there are large meetings or ongoing initiatives, um, you'll want to search for a brief template so you can, just like the word says, kind of condense the information in your report. Um, when you're looking for templates to do, as the slide shows, somewhat of a um, project work, project management type um, template, you can look in that category. I'm just talking about general internet searches here. Um, if you're a Microsoft Office user, you can find plenty of templates with these different um, purposes. And I highly recommend you create your own small library of the most common kinds of documents that you will be creating in report form. Save the templates and use them over and over again. Even uh, reviews and reports from Quarterly profit statements, like fiscal reporting is different, of course, but there could be summarized um, text included in reporting out to teams, projections on new efforts. All of these things fall into buckets and looking for team communications, briefs, reviews and reports, and perhaps even goals, recognitions, awards, uh, templates, storing them in your library will save you tons of time and lots of aggravation and, and help your communications greatly. Okay, let's talk about trademarks. Formal identification. 
The tip here is pretty straightforward and it's super important, maybe the most important one that we're presenting today. Uh, know what is protected by people legally. <laughs> That's what formal identification is. When you're a writer in business, you're going to come across a lot of trademarked um, material. Sometimes it's registered, which simply means it's registered with the legal authorities that say it's for your use and your use only. Um, I have some examples on the slide that you're used to probably seeing windows, wingdings, women in red. I selected three different registered trademarks I found in the very long listing of all the registered trademarks of Microsoft Corporation, which is also a registered trademark. So it could be words, but it also could be a phrase, um, a logo, a combination of a logo and a phrase, like a tagline, trademark. That little TM is something that you may see, um, and that is also a protection. It just isn't a registered trademark, but it's still legal protection. Um, trademark indication that a TM or R isn't even required for business owners to say, I'm the only one with the right to use this mark out there in, my, in the business market. Um, when you're creating business writing and referring to other company or product names, Know if you need to identify them as registered trademarks and know if you're even allowed to use them if it is the case of a logo or other, other visual. They are a matter of legal ownership. Um, many companies protect and license them. There's a way to check, usually, if it's a larger corporation or larger company. Something along the lines of a famous example um, is Kleenex, right, which is a tissue knowing whether you can say the brand name in writing and refer to it um, is for large corporations at least a matter of um, public record usually check out their websites i did this with the microsoft trademarks that i used for the example here and um, where i went was onto the intellectual property portion of microsoft.com there's usually a legal section um, I advise you to do this for another reason, too, even when we're talking about small business use uses, um, the plumber down the street and you're a contractor. Um, it's nice to know that you've got their name right. And if you're going to um, mention a product, for example, that you feature in your business services, um, you want to pay homage and recognize that um, the people that you're doing business with or referring to have gone to a certain amount of trouble to protect their own rights to the use of their um, logo, for example, or their slogan or tagline. And it's only fair that you give them their rights and give them proper notification. So um, there is some tips on working with formal identification in your business writing. Next, we're going to talk about social media. Um, social media, the voice of the business happens across Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, depending on what kind of business writing you're doing and what kind of business you have. We're focusing on the Facebook business page today um, because it offers a really good example that almost everybody is familiar with. Um, Social media, including a, a Facebook page, is a chance to connect with customers and peers. Um, there's a lot of promotional power in social media, so this writing is important. You can also provide um, value in your industry among your peers with educational material, for example. And um, obviously, there's advertising available, too, which is a whole nother ball game when it comes to business writing from the marketing perspective. But... Um, let's just take a look at the Facebook business page um, tone, which we pulled a post right from the Go Skills business page and uh, underscore my tip, which is um, create the voice of the business and make sure that you maintain it in your social media writing. Ever wondered what skills will get you hired and promoted? Check out these seven must have skills for success. Okay, so this sounds like Go Skills Communication, and it uses a couple techniques that are um, 
prominent in good social media writing. One of them is, again, just like we've been talking about, connecting with the audience and what they're interested in. Okay, so this is on target. This is talking about getting skilled up. This is talking about getting hired. We're talking about career advancement. That's what people want to know, not something else. Um, and number two is offers some information, offers some value to the person that's seeing the posting. So this list of skills that you need to get hired and promoted is going to be the right fit for the Go Skills audience and quick way for them to maintain a relationship with them on social media. What would go wrong in writing like this is when we travel out of business matters and into matters of, say, um, political, personal, and or otherwise um, posts that that push the boundaries of what our audience is there to hear from us. Um, another avoidance, I guess I would say, uh, in this space would be a lot of jargon, colloquial language, um, hashtags. People know what hashtags are, but the language here is clear and simple. It's not getting into the business of um, being too witty or too clever. Uh, it's it's offering some value and it sounds like a educational company and provider that GoSkills is. So think about what you stand for before your social media posts and post with the voice of the business as, as if it were a persona. And the website. Um, we all know that it's almost a sin of a mission not to have a website these days. And if you're concerned about business writing and trying to pick up some tips on how to improve your skills, um, chances are you're going to come across uh, some content that will end up on a business website. This might be in your role um, if you work for a small business. And like I did when I started out as a receptionist at a communications agency before I knew it, this was before the days of websites. <laughs> before I knew it, I was writing um, public relations materials, press releases to be released. And that's because that's how it works in business. Um, you start somewhere and you move your way up. Well, if you're working for a smaller company, you might end up actually posting to or writing um, online material uh, like a website. And if you're an entrepreneur trying to... Um, grow your skills in, in business writing, your website is one place that you absolutely should be focused. So again, we pulled our example for this tip, which is to wel make sure that your uh, homepage uh, welcomes people and directs them to the next information that they're seeking. The most important information, where it can be found on your website, needs to appear loud and clear on your homepage. We're going to talk about how Go Skills does that here. But often, you, and I'm sure it's happened to you, you'll land on a, a company website and the homepage is either very sparse, you're not quite sure you're even in the right place, um, or very overwhelming with tons of information about the company, about the products, about the pricing, about the services, um, and it might uh, make you turn away before you get what you came for because it can be too complex. So keep paring down the information on your homepage is what this business writing tip is about. And it's also one of the tips for all the business written business communications that you'll be creating. Um, we want to talk, uh, on, as far as website goes, um, to getting them to the right place. So that's simple navigation. And the way Go Skills has done it here is a, is a great example. It's one that you might keep for your records in the future. Welcoming them with uh, information that says, you have what I'm here for, um, which is defining your career path, right? Getting forward, moving forward in a career is what people come to learn their new skills from Go Skills, an online educator. 
um, learn new skills from an award-winning instructors with simple bite-sized video tutorials tells me exactly what I need to know. Now, does it tell me how? Does it tell me how much? Does it tell me where and when? No. Um, I need to get into the site and start learning. Here's how I sign up. The button is loud and clear. We want to funnel our users to the best places they need to go for their likely purpose or their interest. What are their high priority tasks when they're coming to your site? So that happens at the top half of this page. And what happens on the bottom half of this page um, is also super assuring to um, website visitors. Let's give them some validation or uh, offer some credibility reinforcement. Um, everybody likes to know when they're shopping around that they're shopping around a business that is um, revered and reliable and having a review or a little social media proof um, as Ghost Skills does here. A little testimonial is an awesome idea for a homepage and that's about all anyone needs. They can move on from there as long as your navigation points them in the right direction. So a lot of content there, and I recognize it was an awful lot to cover, but um, we wanted to give you some tips in a full range of um, areas because business writing is obviously a super broad topic. And in the course that I have created at Go Skills is broken down into even more precise and smaller snippets than what we presented today in this less formal environment of the webinar. Um, the instruction on the course is um, more rehearsed, just so you know, more polished, so we don't have the technical difficulties, <laughs> but also um, super targeted step by step from personal um, to inter office to customer and sales communications all the way through to some of the digital um, channels that we talked about at the end here. It's a lot to cover, so if you're interested in more, please check it out. And at this time, if you have been gathering any questions as I roamed through our webinar, um, hopefully you've typed them in, and if you haven't, you can type them in your chat box now. We'll have Cecilia read them out loud for us, um, give her a couple seconds here to gather any questions and let you all have a few moments to type them in. I just want to thank you all for listening, bearing with me and my, um, my slight technical difficulties <laughs> with my presentation today. Hopefully it didn't distract you too much and you got some useful tips that you can apply right away to make an impact tomorrow on some of your business communications. Hi Faith, um, so we do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, the first one is, should I include any buzzwords or keywords in my resume? Ah, I, this is what I like to do. Uh, yes, you should. And um, your resume, if you're using your resume to apply for a particular position used for a particular purpose. I love to look at what the advertisement or the job posting says to try to find some of the buzzwords that um, they're already using. Some people say, uh, let me just give you a quick example, um, that projects need to be executed and other people say that projects need to be implemented. Um, that's not exactly a buzzword, but that's language that you can pull from the actual job posting. And then I always take a, when I, I write other people's resumes often, and I always take a couple of minutes to just look at some of the, um, the writing that is being put out by the company, maybe their website, um, maybe a couple competitors, and find a couple um, keywords from the industry. A little bit of jargon, not a lot. Um, can go a long way. So yes, I definitely would look for ways to uh, sub out some, some of the duller words and replace them with some more pointed, exciting language. Cool. Okay, we have one more question. Um, and this was sent in via email. Um, they ask, how much slang is too much in a work email? I want to be friendly, but I also work in a corporate environment. Yes, so oh, this goes, Two ways, this, and this is based on both experience and just business writing etiquette. 
So based on experience, there's some wiggle room there. Um, working in a corporate environment, but closely with a team of, as I often have, say, other creatives or other strategists who who have a have a lot to share and grow very close, allows for some familiarity. And email itself allows for a bit more familiarity than, say, a formal business letter. Um, that being said, the corporate environment has it has its um, constraints per corporation. <laughs> um, if if you feel like, how can I put this? You're being watched or your emails are being tracked in any way, then obviously you want to be super, super careful that way. Um, but speaking about, you know, we say things like, um, you know, I'll ping you when I uh, hear that or what's your bandwidth for this new project. That kind of, you, you want to call it slang, is usually well within the bounds of um, team and interdepartmental emails. If you're going to, up to the boss level, Maybe not so much. Cool. All right. Well, that's all the questions we've got so far. Okay. Should we um, begin to wrap up our webinar today, Cecilia, do you think, or give everybody just a few more seconds to type in anything else they can think of? <laughs> sure. Well, if you'd like to talk a little bit um, about the course, um, we can give people a couple more minutes and then we'll wrap up if there are no more questions. Okay, absolutely. So the last question that we had is um, one of the topics in the course, actually, um, because there's some, let's call it social aspects, you know, to business communications. Um, it, it lends itself to a discussion that is about personalizing your work, your business writing, right? You, you're not always, if you work in a legal department, you're probably not going to have uh, the same ability, the same um, uh, ability to spread your wings with personalizing information. It's going to be much more um, formalized communication. Uh, but if you're working in a small business or a uh, creative environment, um, it's it's super important to keep your communications at the level of of every everyone else around you. So we talk a little bit about ways that that can play out in a couple different um, channels in the course, and I think it's it's some of my favorite content. It plays out a little bit differently, for example, in social media and various social media channels. So it's obviously only have 140 characters on Twitter. <laughs> your tone is going to change a little bit. We touch upon all that, and I think it's one of the most, it's one of the places that people are insecure about their business writing is um, the inter-office stuff um, and sharing uh, letters and, and so on with um, colleagues and um, possibly supervisors. Let me think about one more, um, one more note that I want to make that I, I made earlier before we wrap up today. And that is um, the, this idea about knowing your audience. I kind of make it my mantra. And uh, it's not just for audience, meaning business writing that applies to customers. Um, it's also for the people that you sit next to, the people that work under you or above you, <laughs> if you will, at the various levels of the corporation, and even um, the people that you work side by side with. Having the ability to review everything once over before you send it out with an eye on who's reading it, who's the highest level that will read it or, or, or what are the job needs, the, um, the job roles or the actual day-to-day -day needs of the person that's reading the communications um, is probably the number one tip I can give overall when it comes to business writing. Write for your audience, know your audience, and um, and be confident in that knowledge, and your writing will flow out much more naturally. Great. Well, that's all the questions we've got. Faye. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everyone again for uh, coming and letting me chat at you. I am happy to. Um, to present this material for you today with the hopes that you'll uh, take it out into the world and create a little bit more um, polished and succinct business writing 
um, in, in your role tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night.